Hey there, everybody. It's Wayne D, and we're going to take a look at the hottest player on tour now, Webb Simpson. Webb went to Wake Forest like I did, so uh, I root for him a little bit more. And he was also the roommate of a student of mine, Chris McCartan, uh, for three years at Wake Forest. So hopefully Chris can follow in Webb's footsteps and get himself out on the tour. So here we have two views. Uh, the view on the left courtesy of, uh, that's the view on the right. Let's go back to the view on the left. Thank you to the San Francisco Golf Performance Center. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between slow motion cameras and regular speed cameras. There's things you can learn from each of them. Good thing about a regular speed camera that slows itself down is that you can do this on the left but with the slow motion camera that's just slow-mo you can't really see the full speed swing and that's one of the most interesting things about Simpson's swing is the timing and tempo rhythm of the movement Alright, so we can go a little more detail from the front. It's nice to have that front view. We don't always get that. So, uh, again, thanks to uh, the guys out there for taking this good picture and posting it on YouTube. But here we go. So, pretty standard setup. Now, the ball looks like it's a little back in his stance, but I am questioning the position of the camera relative to where he's aiming. Uh, I'll show you why. Uh, in the vast majority of good players you'll see that the the extent of lateral movement will be pretty much over with right about now and if you watch Simpson here it's going to advance past that a pretty substantial amount that's it's not normal I don't think because uh, what what's really happening is by the time they get to about here the lateral movements over and it's all rotation but if the cameras on the wrong side of the ball here it would appear that the rotation is still forward that's just more round so anyway I would kind of discount that uh, ball position unless I was standing right there so we won't worry about that now it's pretty evident when you look at the way the wrist right the left wrist and the club face works that he likes to fan the club open a bit on the backswing so we watch the one here on the left Camera angle's a little off, but let's we can pretty much see if you look at the, the toe line here that if we look at the the club as it gets parallel to the toe line, it's under. So this is behind him. So this swing is not exactly right up the shaft plane. It's definitely under. I'll show you a couple of swings from a better angle, and you can pretty much see evidence of that. In fact, let's take a quick look at a swing that's more right behind him. Watch the takeaway. So that's pretty obvious. Now, that's usually something that with the average guy I would fix up right away. Because the ability to build a swing and recover from having the shaft whip under the plane and get a little flat flat here at left arm parallel means already off plane up there. So normally what happens to people from here is that they'll lift it up across the line and then drop it back underneath and get stuck or various other things but that's a, a common occurrence so here you'll note that it only goes up a little bit but what he does is the nature of the timing of the swing which is kind of a fling and catch with a lot of lag so watch watch this one a couple of times here so this this move is just let it go back, cup the left wrist, catch it with the lower body. Now in this case, it's interesting because what we what I've been looking at with a lot of my videos is that I've been tracking the butt of the club, which is right here. and watching it move and then just sort of drawing a line to see what direction it's moving in. Now again this isn't right behind him so 
let's do let's look at the iron shot here. So here's the butt of the club at the top. Let me draw that a little bigger so you can see it. Oops. Any mouse problems today. Alright. It's the butt of the club. Here it goes. There's the grip. So let's take a look and see what direction that is in. Switch it to the line and we go this way. Here we go. So, alright. So once again, you'll see the hands moving right out at the ball. Now, in this case, the shaft, since it's a little bit laid off here as it goes up. See, it's hanging in there, laid off, laid off, laid off. And now when he catches it and he pulls on it, he pulls it right at the ball on plane. Now it's going to shallow a little bit. See, this is a different, this is a different progression than, than say, Hogan used. Hogan would shallow the thing hard right there. But this is a little different. Simpson's right arm is a little more in front of him, pinching and then driving inward. You won't see the right forearm tip as much. But with that catch and the club already well in front of him, the right arm has plenty of room. So most of the time when you see someone steepen that shaft a little bit, it'll overshallow coming in. Now another thing that you'll note here is that his legs are a little bit later than most in squaring. So there's a lot of dependency on this whipping action to time the swing, but you can tell that he owns this thing and he's got particular talent for hitting the golf ball. So if we go back to the driver swing and we see it nice and full with the driver but the whippy swing to get that club all the way to parallel you know he's going to hit it pretty far. And there you can see the hands and the right arm coming in to the side nicely in front of him there and a, just a great approach. Um, now he's got a, he's a tall, tall guy, and he gets the club up pretty nicely at his waist, like I like. Most of these camera angles are moving around, but look at the right forearm and the hands, very close down to the original shaft plane and left on the way through. Now, so let's let's take it back to the front view, and we'll see something very interesting here. Take a look at his left arm. I mean that baby is locked hyperextended. Now this is something that I would never teach anybody to do. It's like a genetic thing. If you look at L's, his arm kind of does the same thing. Now the reason that I don't like it is that I find it most of the time the stiffer that the elbows get the less the trunk is able to move freely. So things kind of get goofy in the wrists when the arms get locked up. So I prefer both arms to look like Simpson's right arm. His right arm looks nice and soft and bent there. But the left arm, as you can see, it's almost beyond straight. So let's take a look in this in the slow-mo swing. The grip is fairly strong. It's conventional, but the left hand's got good three knuckles showing. And I like the wrist on top of the club there. You can see that the wrist is not rolled over. It's, it's just good looking grip. Something that I would definitely teach the average guy is to have a semi-strong grip. Now, this is where you can see the roll of the hands, which is why the club whips around inside a little bit. So, at this point, it's going to look like the wrist cock is going to be a little late, but watch how much the club begins to set right up in here. Now, this is the key to the swing. He's going to He's going to take this thing, and as that wrist gets fully set there, he's going to start forward with his lower body. Watch this. There it goes. Now that cupping of the wrist really allows him to load those babies up big time. This is what Hogan came to a little bit later in, in, uh, in, in the mid to late 40s changed his wrist angle a little bit and uh, his grip and got the club fully loaded in the wrist but not two feet past parallel. Now here's the key part of the golf swing that, that I 
find difficult to teach to the average player and it's this athletic transfer of movement that engages the back muscles now I call this pushing from the ground there's other people that say well if you look at it the his right foot doesn't appear to be or his right leg doesn't appear to be driving or moving but if you watch his foot you can see the heel come in that motion to move the hips forward has to come from somewhere and I choose to believe it comes from the ground at least it does to me when I when I think about how I am moving forward or how I would move forward in an athletic movement I would do it from the ground pushing so I get the impetus pushing from the ground here so the backwards motion of the upper body is still is still doing what it's doing and then the then the lower starts and you can see the sequence takes the muscles in the waist up here and begins to stretch them and then it catches the lat muscles the back sort of connects and engages and then the left arm is pulled up against the chest now watch what he does with his right arm watch the, watch the elbow just drive right underneath the left arm and right into the side so this is a key point when you are trying to get your hands to come out if you look at it from behind if you're thinking about hand path you more or less think in in this direction but when you're thinking about it from this front view and you're looking at yourself one of your goals is to connect that right arm into the rib cage now watch that thing is in there now so if you practice that movement he's he's a as the left arm gets to about 45 he's got himself over here already probably four or five inches or so and that right arm is hooked up so there's an independent arm movement that drives that right arm into the side. Now somebody like Jim Hardy would say that's not a good move, you're going to get stuck, but obviously that's not true. When the hands come out and the right arm drives, it's, it's the opening of the body that pulls the thing around. And the advantage is the power gained by having the right arm into the body like that and the delay of the wrist and the forwardness of the hands that's a big deal. Now, one of the things also that's a little bit interesting about Simpson, he has a classic right load backswing, but he will back up and get more behind it as he's hitting it. See that? So that hang back actually takes care of some of that lag, lets him release the club right into the ball. That's one of the other, another reason why I would question that ball position, because if it's late release, I wouldn't see unless he was just trying to hit a knockdown driver here. Now watch the left arm. That baby's going to stay locked up nice and straight. Look at that. Still hyperextended, still locked up, the joint still locked. Pretty cool. Now we watch the finish this is I really like this idea too this is something I've never been able to do because of my physical inabilities but uh, if you look at the how the right arm goes across the body look at the left forearm there how that takes a, an incredible amount of left side upper body clear to release that club around to the left like that so when you watch a swing that looks like this I think one of the things that you'll that you'll that you'll find is that here's a kid who never tried to steer a golf ball. Look at where the club goes after he hits the shot. Look at that. So that ball's taken off. That ball t took off like this. And look where that finish is going. See, this is where I this is where I just really dislike the the term down the line because the best ball strikers go around hard and there's no effort to push the club down the line and steer the ball even if they say, even if they say they're doing that who knows what it's keeping them from doing but that club goes around big time like that 
Now I wanted to show you one other swing and a couple of uh, let's see if I got this one not that one that one but I fixed one up for you here we go so this is what I used to do with uh, Hogan swing and I'll do this for students. I'll get a film and I'll just get it set up like this and have them just stare at it. Now this is for timing. If you can just keep looking at this, you can watch that about a, a hundred times. You could take a club and start to actually try to emulate that that tempo. This is a fairly quick pace swing. It's got great rhythm. very athletic alright so it's like the old cyber vision but it's gotta be at full full speed like that so you can get the the feel of the tempo alright Webb Simpson hope you enjoyed that